Hi everyone, welcome back to Chrysalis Books. My name is Jessica and I write the blog Lady Lovestead. I also manage the Lovestead, which is my urban homestead, where we like to talk about books. The topic of today's video is sharing with you how I rate my books so that moving forward you can understand my rating system and what the ratings I give books actually mean. <laughs> So I rate books on a standard um, five star rating system and because most like websites and things like Goodreads, Amazon, elsewhere, they usually function with a five star system. So we'll start with a five star rating for a book. I know that a lot of people... Um, say that they're stingy about giving five stars. <clears throat> um, and I guess you could say I'm part of that club because I don't give a lot of five star ratings, but it's because my expectations for a five star book are sky high. For me to give a book five stars, the book has had to change my life in some way where I am a different person after having read that book. And I can probably count on my hand the number of books that have actually changed me in that way. One of them, for example, is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. And I did read this recently, but I started this book as one person and finished as a new version of myself. Like, it was a transformative experience for me. Other books that I've written or rated five stars are um, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, and you know a handful of others. But all of these books, as I said, were a transformative experience for me where I was a different person by the end of the book. So that's five stars. Four stars would be a book that has high literary value, that's really well written, that is of really good quality, that I loved, but that it didn't necessarily like change who I am as a person. So an example of a good four star read is Sin by Thoreau, how we say this, Thoreau, Thoreau Kazad. Um, she is a Persian poet and this book is a four star because her poetry is of really high literary quality. Um, I loved reading this book. I thought it was top notch and really good. And the only reason it, that it didn't earn five stars is like I said, it didn't change me in any fundamental way. It was just a really high quality read. Three stars. Three stars are for the books that I mostly find entertaining more so than to be works of art. So like four and five stars to me are books and literature that are more works of art and then three on down are more so books meant for entertainment purposes. So one example of that is um, Pat Patricia Briggs's Mercy Thompson series. Her books are fantastically entertaining. They're well written, good characters, good plot twists, etc. But I wouldn't necessarily say that these are high quality works of art. They're more just entertaining, fun reads that I enjoy and that um, I definitely will continue to read. So that's what the three stars usually end up being for me is when the books are still pretty good books, um, but not necessarily books that I see pushing any boundaries or addressing you know, major societal concerns or theoretical abstract ideas. They're pure, fun, awesome, entertainment. Still wonderful. I'm not saying that these books are bad at all. They're still wonderful. They're still like books that I want to read. They're books that I want to have on my bookshelf. I'm not a book snob in that way. Um, but in terms of rating quality, 
on a five star system, I would give this kind of book a three. Now for two ratings, those are typically books that were just like, okay, where like they met the standard qualifications to be considered a publishable piece. You know, they had characters and a plot and maybe a, maybe a, a steady, steady, consistent voice. Um, but it really wasn't something that I super enjoyed, not something I would purchase, not something I'd pick up and read again. And then one star books are books that are one of two things. One star books are either books that I DNF do not finish because they just are not worth the time, or they are books that I wish I had never read and wasted my time on. So these are books that I consider just bad, not worth my time, and um, will never buy <laughs> or read again. So that's how I rate my books. And moving forward, when we get into some um, end of the month wrap ups and maybe some specific book review sessions, you'll have a better feel for how I rate my books. And you'll know the why behind why I don't give out a lot of five stars. And you'll understand sort of the differences between a four and five, a three and two, and then a one. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gives you some insight into how I rate books. Tell me how you rate books down below. I'm always curious to know because I think everybody does it a little differently. And some people have like these really complex systems where each characteristic has a different weight like characters are weighted this percent and plot devices are rated this percent and tone and style is this percent so if you do something like that that's a really interesting and i'd love to know more about it until next time i hope that you continue to read good books drink good coffee take care of yourselves and each other Bye.